Right. I'm live here with the boxing socialist himself, Sean Creddy. And he got some crazy boxing questions he going to ask me. Yep, yeah, and Kev, we're going to start it off, man. We're going to throw back some old school fighters. Not too old school, but, you know, in our day and time. So we went back to 140, and we had Overcar. And if Overcar fight at 140, who would win between him and Adrian Broner? Adrian Broner. You think Adrian Broner beat him? Adrian Broner win. Alright, alright. Alright, so at 140, how would he do against Lucas Matisse? Overcar? Yep. He beats Matisse. What? He beats, oh, man. He beats Lucas Matisse. Alright, how would he do against Provodnikov? Provodnikov would be too big for him. I think he'll uh, he'll lose that fight. All right, how Overcar? All right, how Overcar do against Brandon Rios? He beats Rios. Hmm. All right, well, how will Overcar do against Danny Garcia? He would beat Danny Garcia. Oh. All right, how will he do against Lamont Peterson? He would beat Lamont Peterson. All right, since all right, how about this. How would he do 140 against Bud, Terrence Crawford? He would lose to Terrence Crawford. Oh, man. All right, I'll tell you, let's shift to 147. Ike Well, that's Ortega. where he was at. I mean, that was his weight class was 47. But if he fights, yeah. I'm, I'm putting those guys at 47 against yeah. him. But, yeah, I think he, Terrence Crawford would beat him. Right, right, yeah. If over, over at 140. Yeah, all right, so let's go to 147. All right, the Bazooka Corte. How the Bazooka in his prime do against your boy, Kell Brook? Kell Brook knocks him out. What? Knock out, knock out Corte? Nice. Yeah, he knocks out that Corte. Knocks hmm. him out. All right, other 147 pound. How are we doing against Sean Porter? Uh, Corte beats Porter. Knock out. Uh, probably. I think he knocks him out. Probably would. Yeah, probably knock him out and probably like, uh, I don't know, probably eight or nine. Alright. At 147, with Pauli Malinaji in his prime, with his slickness and his movement, did I Corte beat him? I Corte win by decision. Hmm, okay. Alright, how about the power puncher? Ike Corte versus Keith Thurman. Close fight, Keith will probably get the nod. But uh he'll he'll drop Corte a couple of times, but then get in trouble after Corte gets up from the knockdown. And once it gets a little later in the fight, I, that jab will be a problem for Keith. So okay. it's a close fight, but Keith right. might get the nod. But he, right, will so put, that, he would put Corte on his butt a couple of times. All right, I'll tell you what. After, with Sugar Shane Mosley in his prime, right after he beat Oscar De La Hoya, how will Ike Corte do against Sugar Shane Mosley? At 47? 47. I mean, he's in his prime, just came off a win with Oscar De La Hoya. How will Ike Corte do against him? Okay, Sugar Shane, oh, you talking about the first... The first fight with Oscar. Yeah, yeah, after the first fight. After the first fight with Oscar, if he fought on Corte, uh, it'd have been a close fight. He'd been in trouble, though, because that jab would have gave him some problems. And that right hand. Oh, okay, okay. Kind of kind of put your mind on like the Vernon Forest type fight, huh? Yeah, yeah, that would have been a rough fight. Definitely a rough fight. For, uh, All right, Vernon Forest in his prime and I Corte in his prime. Then they fight. No, I'm talking about like in the prime. I mean, like they both they in the best of shot. I mean, in the Bernie prime. Bernie Forrest beats him every time. Every time. Every time. Vernon beats him every time. Okay, okay. All right, with the good jab, with the bazooka jab. I'm talking about in his prime, and that jab is pumping. How will Floyd fare against him? 
Uh, Florida win by decision. He wouldn't stop him. He might drop Corte with a hook. Uh, you think Floyd can drop him with a hook? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we talking about Floyd in his prime, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Floyd drops him with the left hook. Alright, what if he had I right, what if he had I Corte in his prime but Floyd Mayweather right now? At forty eight and up. And him fighting I Corte? And he caught and he caught I Corte in his prime. Uh they go to decision, but Floyd would have a little bit more difficulty with him. Like it would take a little longer, like he might have some moments. All but right. Corte so, won't follow it up. But but he'll be there to the end, but uh Florida win. Florida win about what eight rounds out of the eight to two, eight to four, whatever. Five of it want to score. All right, I tell you what. So let's take let's take Felix Trinidad and his prime. Right after the Oscar, after beating up Oscar De La Hoya, and now uh, how would how would he do against your boy Kell Brook? Felix Trinidad. Tito knocks out Kell Brook. He knocks out Kell Brook. Knocks him out. Ladies and gentlemen, I thought I'd never hear Kev said that Kelbrook would get knocked out. But you can't blame him going against somebody like Felix Trinidad. All right, Felix Trinidad in his prime versus the Floyd Mayweather right now. No comment. <laughs> Listen, you know it, and I know that Felix Trinidad would beat him right now. All right, let's take let's take Floyd in his prime. Let's take Floyd and when Floyd would say forty and up versus Felix Trinidad. No comment. <laughs> All right, how would Felix do against against hard hitting Keith Thurman one time? Tito knocks Keith Thurman out in three rounds. Three rounds. Three rounds. Alright, how will he do it against how will he do it against Sean Porter's bullying tactics? Trinidad knocks Sean Porter out in two rounds. Alright. So after after Agent Broner's hundred and forty seven pound debut when he beat Pauli Malinazi, Pauli Malinazi, Agent Broner's next fight against Felix Trinidad. Well, Trinidad knocks uh, Broner out in seven rounds. Oh man, and I hate to ask you, Felix Trinidad versus Manny Pacquiao in his prime. <laughs> uh, Pacquiao gets knocked out in about three rounds, three four rounds. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you what. Let's go back to your boy Ike Corte. Ike Corte versus Manny Pacquiao. Ike Corte versus Manny Manny Pacquiao. Pacquiao gets. Beat up. Uh, he loses almost every round. He Would might, he get knocked out though? Uh, no, I don't think he'll get knocked out. He might get knocked down once from a jab. And then <laughs> uh, he might rock Corte in the fight with a shot. I could see that happening, but no. He wouldn't be able to. At 47, no. Alright, all right, Kev. At 160 pounds, Gennady Golovkin versus Keith Holmes. Gennady Golovkin would knock Keith Holmes' head in the third row. <laughs> Why would that even be brought up? Alright, Gennady Golovkin, 160 pounds versus William Joppy. Joppy would be out in three rounds. It would look right, just uh, like the last fight we just watched. Joppy would be no improvement. Alright, 160 pounds. Gennady Golovkin versus a prime Bernard Hopkins at 160. Oh, Bernard would win. He would beat. He would beat a, a guy like that because Bernard would get dirty with him. He would smother all his punches. Gennady Golovkin would have about three cuts on his head, eyes swollen, neither from a punch. <laughs> so, and no points would be deducted from Hopkins. So. It'll be a B hop night, it'll be an ugly fight, and at the end of it, Bernard Hopkins' hand is being raised. Oh wow. Alright, I'll tell you what. Triple G versus a prime 
Roy Jones at 160. Oh, Roy would kill him. What? Roy what? would kill Triple G. And a prime Roy? You, you must have forgot. <laughs> 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 you talking about prime Roy Jones. <laughs> Alright, alright, Kev. Alright. This let's is prime Roy talk. Jones. That's, that's when he gave a... Uh, what he gave James Tony to beat down. That was when he was right. Alright, uh, all right, Kev. Two, two well, more, two more matchups. Alright, Kev. Two more matchups. Roy Jones in his prime at 168 pounds versus Andre Ward. Are you joking? Come on, what you got? You talking about at what, 160? At what weight? 168. Cut? 168, 168 Roy? Super, yeah, 168, Roy Jones versus Andre Ward. Superman! Faster than a locomotive, Roy Jones. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Andre Ward against him? Ward would give him probably the best matchup, but in the end, <laughs> shoot, you talking about <laughs> Superman Roy Jones. <laughs> he invented a punch. <laughs> Alright, Kev, 168 pounds, super middleweight, Andre Ward versus, uh, in, in, in his prime, James Tony, 168. You talking about Roy? No, James Tony versus Andre Ward, both in their prime at 168. Oh, uh, Ward would beat Tony. What? Man, you ain't giving James Tony no, no pops at 168. Yeah, Ward would beat him. Alright, and even though even though they missed each other by a couple years, Andre Ward in his prime at 168 versus in his prime, Joe Calzaghe. And you say Andre Ward and Joe Calzaghe? Yep. Joe would have beat Andre Ward every time they fall. No, no way. Every time they fall. Joe Calzaghe will find a way to win the fight. It'd have been an interesting fight because Ward would have changed it. Ward brings a different element. He'd have tried one way, he would have been losing there, so he would have tried to ugly up the fight and and neutralize Joe's movement. And he'd have realized that Joe can fight that way too, and Joe would outwork him that way too. See, people underestimate is the conditioning of Joe Calzaghe. His conditioning, he that man was throwing a thousand punches or, or every round. He was throwing a hundred, even in the twelve. A thousand slaps. Yeah, well, those slaps, people were going down on slaps. <laughs> <laughs> those slaps got him a lot of knockdowns, and he retired undefeated from slapping people. So maybe some boxers <laughs> need to learn how to start slapping. 